When we're working with lean or continuous improvement on a machine, you often hear you have to register OAE, that is overall equipment effectiveness. But why and how? Let's dive into that in this video. Hi, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel, where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today's topic is overall equipment effectiveness. But I would like to challenge it a bit on why do we need it, when is it useful, and if you're going to implement it, which categories and which results should you look for, and how should you set up your registration system. One of the main lean concepts is eliminating waste and only doing things that add value. And this we should also apply when measuring the effectiveness of our equipment. So don't implement overall equipment effectiveness registration on each and every line. Now the main value for registering and improving your equipment effectiveness is to free up capacity so that you can produce more product on the same line without having to invest in additional capacity and so that you can then draw more profit from the market. So that already gives us the first clue. Any line that is in a good overcapacity will probably not need too much effort on the effectiveness improving. But for some lines, it is very important that the machine does not stop during production. And especially if, for instance, your product is time sensitive or temperature sensitive during production. There are quite a number of enzymatic food products, for instance, that if the line stops, the actual process itself continues. And then there are those products that are very temperature sensitive, so that if they cool down because of the breakdown, your product will be ruined. In these cases, it's also very advisable to register your equipment effectiveness, but then you focus on specifically the performance categories. We'll come to that later. Now, whatever the value of the OAE registration that you get from your specific line, it's important to understand that the real value of the registration is not in the OAE percentage figure itself, but in the components of stops. So where are your effectiveness losses? Because this will give you insight roughly into what can we do to improve it and also give a good hint to who should be involved in solving it. Now, because of this, I am not a big fan of the generally used availability times performance times quality. Especially the availability category is far too wide and doesn't really tell us who should act. The performance part I think is good, but it does depend on how your continuous improvement organization is already built up. So what does a good category list look like? I propose we use the following. Firstly, we have two effects that cannot readily be influenced by the factory itself, and those are factory closed and no demand. So factory closed means that the line does not have any operators or mechanics working at the moment, and perhaps indeed the whole factory is closed. You cannot easily switch on the line. Overcapacity or no demand means that in principle the line is ready to produce, but there is no planned demand. and The market does not ask any product at this moment. Then we move to two categories that are influenced mainly at the factory level and not so much by the line or department itself, and those are planned stops, usually technical maintenance days, and routine stops. These are frequent occurrences that are more or less planable. The main examples here are cleaning and setup product changeovers. Then we come to categories that are daily business and mostly influenceable by the department itself. And first of these are supply failures, where the cause is actually outside of the line in question. Uh, and it's a bit of an everything else together category. So we'll get back to that in a bit. Uh, then you have your breakdowns, often technical in nature, but they may be caused by operating errors. The key thing here is that the operator cannot readily restart the line. They have to do some real interventions and maybe even need mechanics to aid them. And these are usually a bit longer stops of at least five to 10 minutes and can go into hours or even days. And then we have our short stops and speed losses. These are often called performance losses. And in fact, this category from your availability performance quality, I do like. And this is where you check the running performance of the line at any moment. And a speed loss is what we would call the operator put the line at a lower speed than is the norm. And short stops are those very small interruptions that the operator can quite easily solve during production. And the last are quality defects. And uh, these actually depend quite a lot on how your process is laid out, what type of pr product you are making, and can you readily detect if there is a quality defect or not. Because to drag in data a couple days later when you know that there was a defect 
is usually not really worth the trouble because it will not give your operator the information and focus that they need right now to run the line smoothly. Now, as I said, the main objective of this categorization is to get an idea what type of action is needed and preferably already get an idea who should be involved in eliminating these problems. Now, the first two are demand driven and usually a bit long time, but from a factory standpoint, what you can do when you know the demand that is coming towards your lines is to shift from overcapacity to a closed factory. And this will usually yield that you do not have to pay labor force that is at the line on the ready. For instance, not running your line in the weekends may really save a lot on labor cost if you know that the demand for this line is only five days a week. And the same goes for the choice between operating only during the day or full circle, including night shifts, which again demand a lot from your organization and will make it both more difficult and more expensive. These two categories really fall within the scope of your plant management team. And if you are in a company with multiple factories, your supply chain network. Do not expect that your operators or even your production manager can do too much about these categories. They just need to register it in a good way. And then those two factory-wide categories. And the main thing here is that both planned stops and routine stops are very predictable. In fact, you can plan most of them ahead of time. And this also gives us a good opportunity to look at how long should one of those stops last. So we have two main ways to improve here and get back machine time. And that is to reduce the number of times that they occur and to reduce how long each of these occurrences are. Because these are so planable, your planning or supply chain department should really be involved in solving these together with your technical or production department, which might be easier to understand if we take an example. For instance, a routine stop is product changeover. So you change from one product to the other. Now, of course, how often this happens depends a lot on your production planning. So if you make short runs in order to make each product every day, then you have a lot of product changeovers. One way to reduce the time you spend on changeovers is to have less product changes, so make bigger batches. And the other way to improve it is to really check, can we do this changeover faster? Great tools for this are SMED, single minute exchange of dye, or ECRS, eliminate, combine, rearrange and simplify. And these type of tools will help you to reduce the time it takes to go from one product to the other, which might give you more capacity, or you use this improvement to actually increase the number of product changes and become very flexible in your production line and load balance other machines a lot better. It depends on the product setup that you have at your factory, but it may sometimes be very beneficial to actually increase the frequency of changeovers. But for this, you need to reduce how much machine time it costs to do a changeover. So depending on the needs of your factory and also your continuous improvement organization, this would be a topic for the focused improvement pillar if you just want to create more capacity or your lean pillar if your main goal is to become more flexible and have a balanced load. Now your plant stops, because most of them are technical, are mainly the domain of your plant maintenance pillar. Now I said that these plant stops are not directly influenceable at a daily level. But there is one thing that's very important and that is that your routine stops should be performed within the standard time. So how often you have to do a changeover or whether or not the cleaning landed in your shift, that is not influenceable by the operators, but that they finish within the allotted time, that should be a key indicator of their performance. On to those bottom four categories, where I said that they are more the daily business and they should be really in the daily control. Now, your production department will not be able to influence all of these categories, but I do suggest that your production manager and the team leader who is at this moment running your production are the responsible people for driving performance on these four categories. And the main thing that they can do to help on a daily level is to make sure that when the problem occurs, that it is solved as quickly as possible. So if you have a supply failure, communicate with the other departments, the other lines that caused it, make sure you get the solution that is optimal for the capacity of your factory. When there is a breakdown, get your mechanics well informed, make sure you get the line running again and then start problem solving. And when you're looking at stops and speed, it's most important that you check that the process parameters are correct. That means 
doing your process confirmation rounds and checking if the settings of your equipment are correct. And the same also goes for quality defects where the main influence is making sure that you have the correct settings and that your line is performing smoothly. And especially with these last two categories, it takes a strong manager to see that when the line has some trouble, some problems that are continuously there, but don't really stop the production process at all to actually stop the machine and make sure it gets fixed, eliminate the problem and then continue normal production again because usually this will get you the best results in the slightly longer term. Now really improving on these categories is usually driven by some trend and frequency analysis and you need a bit more data and a bit more time to do this and give priority to where you should put your focus. So the people doing this analysis and also the improving, if you have a pillar structure in place, will be focused improvement for routine stops and supply failures. If you do not have a focused improvement pillar in place, it will probably be the planning department together with somebody from production, maybe a little bit of technical, it's almost the same people that would normally be in the focused improvement pillar. Then your breakdowns are really planned maintenance territory, or if you don't have the pillars, the maintenance departments and your maintenance engineers. And when we look at short stops and speed losses, I would suggest you make your autonomous management teams responsible for this. Now, your technical department can do a lot to help but you will see that mostly these are small settings, smart things to do on the line. So a real Kaizen approach of small gradual improvement will often yield the best results. So that's why AM onto this. If you do not have this pillar, it is mostly production, production facilitator and your technical department. And for quality defects, since it is mostly about setting the right parameters for your products and your processes, it will be technology and the quality departments or the progressive quality pillar. Now for all of these categories, I'd also like to refer back to my video about the infinite loop of daily control and improving in that you should have norms for how often and how long can these machine effectiveness losses be expected. So what is our current standard? And you will literally have norms for how long a cleaning should be or a product changeover, what the speed of your line is, how many quality defects do you expect during a startup. And whenever you get over these norms, there should be direct action by your operators and initiated from your daily control system. And actually improving your current performance levels should be a strategic choice because you have to invest resources in it and it will generally also have a bit longer time span. Now in this video I will not go into how to really register these OAE losses in practice. The main thing to remember is that it can be done fast, simple and cheap. There are basic software packages on the market and it's actually also quite doable to set up a paper OAE registration. And if you do not currently have an OAE registration at your factory, just start with a paper or simple software version. This will give you a good idea of where your priority areas are and how to best improve the capacity of your lines. And then when this is in place, you can go further and install a more serious, more automated and easier to use type of OAE registration. So let's recap. The main value of registering overall equipment effectiveness is to increase the capacity of your line without having to invest. For this you need to know what your effectiveness losses are so that you can direct action to it and already know who should be the first responsible person to do these actions. For this we need a categorization that is conform what we see as hindering our processes with a nice split of causes and I gave one that works in many situations but your industry might tweak it a little bit and always use your OAE KPIs to drive this action, which also means that at many levels you do not present the OAE as a percentage, but individual categories or even the average time of a changeover as your actual indicator. Do what it takes to drive the effectiveness of your line, not to make a nice presentation about OAE. I hope you liked this video. Let me know through the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And do please drop a comment. Let me know which topics you would like to see explained or what did you take from this video. I'm happy to answer any of your comments. For now, I wish you the best of luck improving the effectiveness of your lines. And as always, enjoy the journey.